Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome. All right, this video was prompted last night after a discussion with somebody, and I won't mention a name, Skippy. That um, you know, working with BSP geometries, there's a right way and a wrong way, and just want to kind of show you the the ins and outs of it. Um, this project, I'll go ahead and kick it off here with. Uh, the thing that I added in last night on uh, kind of a screw around stream was we added in the uh, the animated character into the main menu. If you want to see that um, and setting up render targets and things of that nature so you can add moving characters into your main menu, let me know and I'll do a separate video just on that. Alright, let's go ahead and create a test map new level default all right and first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of you because I'm not gonna need a sphere relay re re all right so hopefully we didn't lose the entire stream there because yeah the hotkeys that I have set up for um for my streaming software I didn't think about it, and I have the delete key set up as one of the keys. Probably need to, to change the binding on that one. So the uh, the delete key just happens to be the uh, the end stream key. So yeah, I'm gonna have to change that. So we'll have to re remember that, so uh, I don't do that again, which I'm probably gonna. Because I was sitting here talking, and I look over, and I see. Um, uh, chat offline. <laughs> no bueno. So, let's get back into it. Um, setting up BSP geometries. If you look, this is you know, your starter map. These squares here are 100 by 100 in size. So, you can always use that as a good ruler for creating things. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I go to my world settings and change to third person game mode and play in selected viewport. So as you can see, each of these squares 100 by 100 and again I use that as a good ruler. Um, I've also been known to when making things like laying out uh, specific items like um, the distance for a street I will actually create a BSP or a cube usually a BSP in order to um, create the um, a ruler or a spacer and I just grab a um, BSP geometry, drag it into the map, and I'll resize it. And go to your details panel, and I just do um, 100 by, we'll just say for now, 500 by 100, and that makes me a nice little 100 by 100. And say this is the width of my street or my trail or my river or whatever I'm I'm playing with, then I can do that, and I have a specific set size that I can use for spacing out items. Yay, delete key. Um, let's see if I can change the settings here on the fly. Hotkeys. Yes, remove. All right, so hopefully that'll take care of that problem. So, <laughs> so I don't keep killing the stream while I'm trying to uh, to work inside Unreal Engine 4. Hindsight, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Okay, so a right way and a wrong way to work with BSP geometries. So, I see a common mistake that people make whenever they're, they're working with them. So, okay, I'm going to drop this into the map, and I want to make a a wall. So I'm going to grab my transform tools here, and I'm going to scale this up, and I'm going to scale it over this way, and then I'm going to move it, and you know they 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 get carried away with um, using the transform tools. And honestly, when you're messing with BSP geometries, you need to forget that this key ever existed. This little button right here, forget about it, because now if you look at it. The big light and gray uh, squares, not the little ones, but the big ones, are supposed to be 100 by 100. The smaller are supposed to be 10. And as you can see, um, judging by the, the squares here, uh, yeah, they're about um, 
each of the little squares is more like 30. So absolutely the wrong way to do things. And hang on see. Um, absolutely wrong. So you can go back in here and well some people well I, I can scale it with right here. One by no one by one. Forget that this right here exists and forget that this right here exists. Because what's going to happen is you can use that short term. What I mean by that is um, So with the um, right here, the scale, if you were to change this to 2, it stretches it and skews it out. Hang on a second. Um, it's, it's skewing it the wrong way. So, if you just want to quickly get an approximate size and you use this transform tool, like, okay, I want it to go from this square and line it up on your, your grid pattern down here, and I want it to stretch out, and I want to go maybe to here. Well, that scaled it up by three. So... You know, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Forget forget using this right here, and forget using this tool right here. Whenever you can come right over here to your brush settings, and if I want to make it um, 100 deep, I do it that way. If I want to make it 100 in that direction, no problem. If I want to change the height to 300, no problem. And when you're doing that, you're actually changing the BSP geometry. And the one thing I, I hate really having to do is I'm going to go in here to add new. Oh, wait, never mind. I already have starter content. Um, I've added in, but if you want to add starter con content to a project you've already started, go to add new, feature a content pack, go to content packs, and starter content. Or if you want to add a vehicle blueprint or twin stick shooter or whatever else you can do it right from here and just click on add to project so now if I add materials to this and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one right here well actually no, I'm gonna show you if you don't have a material selected and you drag a box into your world you're gonna then have to manually select each individual face and apply a material to it by selecting your material and clicking here and you're gonna to have to do that for every one of the faces but if you want to have the entire cube you drop in have that material on it select your material and then drag your BSP into the map there you go it comes right out of the box quote-unquote as having that so, let's actually come over here to our brick. And no, I'm not trying to drag that in there. Let's drag the box in there. And now, instead of it being blank, we select the brick and drag the box in. And now we have that. So I'm going to Control C and Control V, make a copy of it. So now I have two of the same box both with a brick texture. So now if I'm trying to use these transform tools then let's actually move it over a little bit more. If I use these transform tools and I stretch it out look what happens to the material. It no longer matches with anything else in the other uh, scene whereas um, let's make it two by two Whereas I can come right over here to the other one that I created, and I can do exactly the same thing. And if I want to change the X, if you look at 
your XYZ right here, you can tell which one's which. So the Y, let's make that 400. So now we have the same width, approximately. And change the Z height, which, and let's go with 400 on that as well. I can create the same thing by using these manual adjustments, but I have not killed my material because using these transform tools here, you actually stretch everything out. And then you're going to have to come back over here and scale your your material separately. And it can be a pain in the behind to try to get everything sized up just right. You always have to remember whenever you transform in any way shape or form you're gonna have to make sure you're still on the ground there but when you look at it those don't look like bricks they look like bricks but unless you're trying to make cinder blocks they're a little bit too big and that's the original texture or material the way it's supposed to be so that's that so let's dump you down and it's best to click on the box over here in your world outliner and let's say, let's change it back to, actually no, it was 200. 200 by 200 by 200. Now, there's a bunch of other things that we can do with this. Now, I've shown before, and I'll just show really quickly here. Your brush type is additive, and shape is a box. Now, you can add in stairs, select your material, select your linear stair, drop it into the map, and it's there. But if you need to make your stairs a little bit higher, so let's bring this over here, and let's say that, um, and by selecting here, you get the correct dimensions. So let's change the Z height to 400. Now you want to get the stairs to match. So you grab your stairs, and Let's go ahead and line them up. Now I want that to go all the way up to there. So I can actually come in here to the number of steps. And let's try 15. And need a little bit more. And okay, we can try actually grabbing right here and using the slider. That's pretty good. And actually matches up really good. You can actually change the height and width and length of your stairs. So if you want to fine-tune it to match a specific height, you can do so. Now, oftentimes what I'll do is... I'm going to... No, you asshole. I want to click on the player. And let's actually go ahead and... Click on the floor. It is... But isn't a BSP geometry, so I'm not going to be able to do it the way I want to. But let's grab this guy and zero it out move it over to the edge actually and then this guy the stairs let's put that at zero now you notice the stairs whenever I zeroed them out they're anchored to this point right here where the other one was anchored in the center. So you have to remember that whenever you're, you're doing your placement and compensate for the stair width, which is 200. So it would actually be a negative 100 on my location. So there we have stairs. And that is a quick way to, to add stairs into the map. Um, what if you've created this and you want to change the materials? It's not a problem. If you want to change the, the top of the stairs, we'll say, you can left-click on the, the individual faces. Now, I've noticed that sometimes... No, I didn't tell you to move. Uh, sometimes whenever you're, you're doing this, it seems to want to uncheck for some reason. So, select a couple faces and, say, pick a different material. I'm going to go ahead and put that one on there. And if you want to, you could also rotate them so they look like so. So if you're clicking through and it drops, then just limit the number you're clicking on. I'm control left clicking, 
it works, but like I said, sometimes it wants to just let go for some unknown reason. So, just take your time. Do what you got to do, and there you go. Now, what if you wanted to create a set of floating stairs? Well, how can you create floating stairs out of this? And... Will you let me do one more? Yes, you will. Now, um, as I showed before, when you're setting up BSP geometries, you can actually um, set it up to where they're additive or subtractive. And what that's going to mean here is if I want to add in a BSP geometry, control C, control V, let's add one in here, and then I want to make a hole going through this so that I can make a door frame. So control C, control V, I'm just going to add another copy in, and I'm going to resize this to 100 by, it doesn't really matter for right now. Uh, just want to showcase what it, what it actually is. You can do subtractive by changing it in brush type. And now whenever you move it in here, you can actually create cavities, you can create doorways, if you're making a fireplace you could use it like that um, so there you go and you actually have a a hole you, you notched out in there and by having the um, the cube already selected with the material it's gonna put those materials in there and if you wanted to you can come back in and you see how this face is different and grab it and rotate it 90 degrees and reorient the way the bricks are, are showing same thing for up there and there you go so if you want to make this into a set of floating stairs, you can grab your stairs, click on them in your world outliner, and you can see that I have 20 steps. So I'm going to control C and control V so I can make a copy of it. I'm going to change the number of steps down one. So it's 19 and I'm going to make it subtractive and I'm going to move it. Now this works really good if you pay attention to what you're doing because what, what I just did here was I moved it a little bit too far and it's chopping out my wall on the other side. So you need to take in consideration your stairs. So I'm going to try taking it to 18 instead. And you want to make sure that... Um, you had the um, the material selected, but we can come back in here and fix that material in just a moment. So grab that and you can align, you can do all kind of stuff with this, but by changing the number of stairs that I have and making it subtractive, you can adjust that. I'm going to go back to 19 that should line up pretty good do it like so now if you come back in here you can redo your texture or your material so there you go now you actually have a set of floating stairs that yes you can walk underneath and walk on top of all right easy enough right Floating stairs the easy way. And I believe I'm going to have to go over and have a discussion with my neighbor again. Remind him that this is not the ghetto. So I'm going to take this and lower it down. So if I want to make it into a doorway, it would be easier to, to get in and out of. So BSP geometries are really, really easy to work with experiment with it play around with it and try different things you know the subtractive thing now you've got these different shapes you can work with and 
you know, we got to have this floor bigger. And I hate to rescale this item because it's just not right. But I just need a bigger floor to work with. So you've also got um, curved stairs. Now these are pre-set up to have a 90 degree turn to them. So you can actually, when I, I drop it down in there, um, what if I want to drop in another one, but I want the stairs to turn the other direction? Just do that. Click the counterclockwise button, and then you can rotate it around. That's a 180 degree rotation there. So, easy enough, right? And the same basic principle with that, you can change the number of steps. The angle of the curve is set to 90 degrees. What if you want to set it to, to a higher amount? Um, grab one in here and want to change the angle of the curve. I can do that. Set it 210 and set it 180. You can use a slider or you can manually put in a number. So now instead of it being a 90 degree turn, I can make it into 180. But what if I wanted more steps? Let's make it 20 steps. I change the height. What if I want to change the height back down to 12? So you look at it now. You can just use that to quickly create custom stairs to put wherever you want. And the materials are correct ish. <laughs> you know, it's going to look a lot better than, if, than, than trying to manually place an individual block or something of that nature. Um, so that's those stairs. But you've also got a sphere. Now with your, your sphere, when you place it into the map, you can see that it is, well, that's a lot of freaking flat spots. You can adjust your radius and so forth here. Um, hmm. Thought there was more adjustments to it than that. Um, tessellation. There you go. The higher that number, the more faces you're going to end up getting. So we're just going to shove that over there for now. We'll take a look at it. That's a lot of faces on it. But it really kind of screws up that material. So you really have to, if you're going to do that, you really have to think about what material you're going to put on there. Um, the spiral stairs. These are going to be a full set of, let me just put it right over here. Spiral stairs. They're going to do a, a full 360 degree turn. But the one thing I noticed that whenever you first put one of those in there is the height is always too high when you first put it in. And yeah, it's it's a little bit on, on the close side. So you take that same thing right there and let's go ahead and have it selected. Number of steps, steps per 360 degree rotation. So I have 16, so let's set it to 20 and 20, and it's still 360, but it increased the number of steps. But you have to keep in mind, you're going to have to lower it down a little bit so that first step is manageable for you to be able to walk over and get up onto it. So you can add number of steps. You can change how high it is, how many rotations it is. I mean, you could even take the same thing and... Select it, Control C, Control V, and drag it up and continue it on. So, if you're trying to build a, a round castle that you can put a, a round tower and be able to climb up the inside of the tower, then that's one way you can do it. Um, so, how would you make a round tower? Simple as dragging in a cylinder and remember we had 20 on this so let's change the number of sides to 20 and what was the radius of our stairs step width inner radius and you can modify the inner radius on that as well um, step height um,
we got an inner radius of 100, and that's here to here. We'll adjust it as we need to. So let's go to our cylinder, and we change the number of sides to 20. Let's actually change the um, the Z height to, screw it, 1,000. And remember, whenever you, you change that, it's going to extend through the floor as well, so you're going to have to remember to, to bring it up. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make it hollow. So I'm going to check right there. And default wall thickness is 20. So now we have a cylinder here. If we take this over here and I'm going to grab both of these guys here. And I'm going to change this to 0. So that it's right there. And I'm going to move you out of the way. So I, I know that that's at zeroed, and then let's make it at negative 1,200. So we have a defined location. Grab our cylinder, and we want to match up the location, which is negative 1,200, zero, and zero, or whatever. We just want to change negative 1,200 and zero. So it would be negative 1,200 and 0. That will put it directly on top. So now we want to look at our outer radius and inner radius. You're not going to be able to adjust your inner radius until you've adjusted your outer radius. So we know that we need it bigger. So let's adjust our outer radius to 300 and then try 290. And that was just the first guess. And it's actually not a bad guess. So now we've got a spiral staircase that we can use to go in and out there. And we need a doorway right there. So I'm going to just grab a regular box brush. And I'm going to make this Z height of, or that's fine, and 130 on the X. And let's try 50 on the Y make it subtractive, slide it over, so we cut a hole in the wall so we can actually get in. So now if we come over here we can actually find the door, walk in, and walk up our spiral staircase on our new tunnel, or our new tower tunnel, what the hell. So the height doesn't match up. So there's a couple things we can do. The easiest way to do it would be to actually just adjust our cylinder. Um, our height was there. Let's try it at 800. And remember, we're going to have to match it up. So That's pretty close. So we could actually just put a platform here and, and walk off from there. But the whole idea is we just created a, a cylindrical tower that is hollow and we have a door that we can walk in and out of and a set of spiral stairs. Let's go look at the ball real quick. So yeah, that's the material looks a little funky on it, but it's effective. So that was the easy way of creating a tower with spiral stairs to go up our stairs. Our tower then we could put a wall connecting, do whatever you want. And the the hollow thing also works on if you're doing a cone, grab this in here. Let's change the number of sides from 8 to 20. And let's tell it to be hollow. And let's rotate it around so we can see the bottom of it. And I'm just going to raise it up. So now, you can see that we put a, a cone in there. You can use that to, you know, keep it straight up and down instead of rotating it. Use that for the cap for a medieval tower or uh, whatever. You know, you can create this as a giant funnel and use a, a subtractive BSP to go inside and create a hole for someone to fall through or whatever. There's so many different things you can use with it. These are just your basic shapes that you want to get into so that you can create your own assets, essentially. Um... Uh, a box. You want to create a, a cheap, quick, fast house, then let's go ahead and make it 
500 by 500 by 500 and there you go and bring it up to floor level we're gonna make it hollow and then let's go ahead and make a door so I'll grab another box we'll make it the X value of 130 now if you're using um, the starter content and you want to use their door frame and their door 110 is a good width for that uh, let's go with a Y of 22 and a Z height of 200 is fine and we want to change that to subtractive drag it over to our, our wall and there you go you could actually drag it up one if you want to have a door sill manually adjust the height however you wanted to but there you go so those are BSP geometries laying them down the correct way so that you get the best results out of your um, your materials when you wrap it on there if you wanted to change your materials um, after you've already got it down you can manually click on this face and then click on one you want to use and just do that or if you want to do more faces left click control left click and select the, the faces that you want to work with and that you want to change the the material on and now that you've got multiple selected you can do the same thing um, let's go with chrome and boom like that so just that easy to change them I don't like chrome so I can just um, control Z by the way to undo So if there are no questions on, on these guys, the uh, BSP geometries, then you can always come back over here and select my sphere, go back to the tessellation, lower it back down. One is, well, definitely not even close. Three is decent, but four is probably your best option five is going to give you a lot more but depending on what you're trying to do if you just want to get that round look then four is not a bad way to go now what if you want to change all of these faces good god can you imagine trying to, to select all of those faces I'm not going to do it so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the material that I want to use say we want to use the um, the moss whatever um, I've selected one face here and let's add that one to it and oh well I'm gonna have to sit here and do all of these and this is gonna suck greatly so I've I've selected a few of them now I'm gonna hit on select select all adjacent surfaces that's selected all of them now I can do this and this and I've just completely changed all of them over to that new texture or material so you don't have to sit there and click every single solitary face click one change it click a second one leave it alone Control left click both of them and then do what I just showed just then and you can change them all by selecting all adjacent materials now as far as I remember the um, the sphere I don't think you can change collisions on these if you want to change collisions on them to where say they, they had gravity enabled then would assume you'd have to convert it over to a static mesh but that's that we're gonna leave this this video 
where it is because I just want to showcase the basics of working with BSP geometries and remember when you're creating your BSP geometries um, always remember that if you don't want a material on your your box when you first place it in don't have one selected if you do want it selected and say you want to have that material just pre-select it and then drop it in so there it has the material already on it so let's see walnut floor whatever you want to put on here select your material grab your box or your shape that you want drag it into your scene and it'll come out with the material already on it when you go to resize it use your brush settings to get the best results because this and this changing the scale will ruin your materials aspect ratio and you're gonna have to go back and manually adjust it like by clicking the individual face and then going in here and adjusting the scale there put a number in hit apply if it's wrong do it again hit apply back and forth back and forth and it could be a pain in the butt so to save the headaches and use your materials the way that they look normally just remember utilize this area right here your brush settings if you're using a box specifically you've got X Y and Z you can find your X Y and Z by looking at your little diagram right here Z is up and down in this case my X is going left and right and the Y is going forward and backward if you turn this way X is going this way and Y is going that way just follow the little 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 uh, rows here that uh, will point in your direction or your compass or whatever you want to call it it will show you which direction is which it's listed by X Y and Z with the letters and by colors even though there are no colors here they are here even though these you need to forget exist same thing with this forget that exists I see so many people that that make BSP geometries into their map and they look absolutely great except for they didn't follow that rule and it just the materials won't lay down and they can't get it to adjust correctly and they can never get them just right so hopefully this helps somebody out and hopefully hopefully you like this video leave a thumbs up thumbs down make sure you subscribe try to get that um, thousand subscriber mark by October so all right guys thanks for watching and we'll see you soon